The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. My grandmother uh, was always uh, a distance from us. We lived in a different town. We, in some some cases, you know, in Texas, you might as well be in another state if you're in another town. She would put up with just, hi, Grandma, love you, thank you for the Christmas present, or or whatever by phone, or by a a, a Christmas card or or a note that's written and sent in the, in the mail. She would only put up with that for so long and pretty soon she would say, you, you gotta get here. You, you've got to come to my house. Um, so that she could hold me in her arms, have me in her house, um, pinch my cheek and kiss my forehead and feed me cake and all kinds of stuff. And just, just, uh, have this intimacy, personal, touching uh, intimacy with her. That's what I picture as the, the clarification for what Jesus is talking about when he talks about worship. There's so much to learn about how to turn all your words of life that burn in me into a living fire. Flowing deep and flowing clean, so that all can come and drink. It's nothing you can do by long distance. Worship is the up close, personal, intimate, vulnerable, honest, open, however you want to say it, but it's all those things and much more that we can't really explain in, in language. Be your friend, one that you can depend on. Thank you, Jesus. the language of Jesus when he talks about God is seeking genuine worshipers. He's seeking those of us who will, anytime we hear his voice, anytime we sense his presence, anytime we open his word or hear him speaking through uh, a scripture that's read, we turn and come toward him no matter what we have to leave behind. From my heart, I'd like to say that I
Lee Clark. He is the uh, head honcho of Catalyst Ministries in San Clemente, California. And Terry has been singing for how many years? <laughs> uh, quite a few. Uh, since I came out of the womb, actually. Oh. They, they, I, I think they tried to put me back because they thought there was something wrong. Oh, dear. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. So, were you raised in, in California? No, I was raised in Texas. Texas? Yeah. Wow. When did you move to uh, California? Well, um, Nancy and I were in England. Mm. Uh, I was with a band there called Liberation Suite, like a hotel suite. And <clears throat> we were married there in London. Oh. And when we came back, we, we came back for a short time for, uh, to Texas just to be with family. And then we moved to California. Mm. So that was in uh, 76 or 7 that, that we came to California. When did you get married then? What year? Sorry? What year were you married? 70, 75. Aye. That's good. That's good. And it's still there, eh? <laughs> yep. That's okay. good. I'm so happy. Uh, you, uh, from 1980 to, two, to 20, 2000, I mean, uh, what band or uh, group did you were a part of? Well, I was I was um, very involved in uh, we're not the music production of uh, Promise Keepers. Oh yeah. And so there were a lot of a lot of people involved in that. There were I think in the final a couple of years uh, that I was involved, there were four different. Uh, uh, groups of musicians and huh? singers that uh, were uh, almost simultaneously sometimes working in different states uh, in America. So that was a very busy time. Mm -hmm. But um, normally I've, I've always been, uh, been a solo artist and would put together great bands when I needed them and had some great musicians working with me all along. I was with Chuck Gerard band for a while. Once we we came back to to Cal, we came back to, U to the U.S. And, and moved to California. Actually, we were coming back to to U.S. Uh, to to actually move uh, to California mm -hmm. and to be uh, be working with Chuck Gerard, and he and he produced my first solo album and while we were in the studio on with my album he put together uh his new chuck gerard band oh. and we had my band that, that i was with in, in the uk mm -hmm. uh, we were we were chosen to introduce because we were well well known in in all europe and scandinavia and and the U UK and yeah. and um, to introduce Chuck Gerard as a solo artist to that part of the world. He was already seen as a solo artist here in America. Uh -huh. uh, we so we were on a, like a six six week tour all over those countries with with Chuck to introduce him as a solo artist. And while we were on the the road. <clears throat> Uh, the decision was made for for us to come back to California and for him to produce uh, uh, my solo album. You, I listened to your uh, album, many of them, I've heard some. Um, you have an excellent voice, sir. Well, thank you. Uh, the Lord has made it very clear several times that it's his. And <laughs> Because he can, he can, uh, he he can use my willingness for him to use my voice and and to do what it, what he wants. And so, if, if I ever get uh, kind of a, a funny idea, then then he he makes sure I, I realize that it's his. <laughs> yeah, he snaps you back, eh? <laughs> yeah. 
So, um, <clears throat> your first recording, what was that called? Welcome and what? Welcome. Ah. Welcome was the first one. Yeah. Oh. And that was the one that Chuck, Chuck produced. So, when did you start uh, singing with Maranatha? Well, that, Music. that started in probably, uh, that probably started in mid, mid, uh, let's see, that would have been not too long after, after we came back to the States and did, and were, were working on my album, yeah. they uh, they were putting together those, those, uh, teams for Promise Keepers, mm. and so there was, um, there was a, a lot, a lot of things going on right then, and that that went through uh, uh, probably uh, early seventies. Wow! And then uh, and then Maranatha Maranatha used me as a vocal, uh, starting with uh, phrase seven, I believe, and and. Uh, Tommy Coons called me in to, to do the vocal on, it's a really, really a big honor to uh, sing a vocal on song five, which oh. was Bill Sprouse's uh, uh, song, and that was my first song, a uh, song, and then we did, and uh, in, in 2000, we, we released a uh, a project of collection of, of uh -huh. songs that I sang with Maranatha. It was called uh, 20 Years uh, TC and MM, oh. 20 Years of Worship. Wow. And that that was from 2000, uh, I mean, uh, 1980 to 2000. Wow. You did, you've been singing a long time, kiddo. Yep. My, you know, my, I was, hmm? When I was three and four, I was, I was uh, singing in my uh, with my cousin mm -hmm. in my uncle's tent revivals on the plank platform with with dust, uh, sawdust trails and and plank altars and uh, my family were I mean the band was all my family yeah. my mom oh. played played piano my my dad played rhythm guitar my uncle was a preacher and he also played. Uh, played the guitar and my aunt played the bass. She was a guitar player too. And me and my cousin would sing old songs like There Is No Secret and, or It Is No Secret and uh, uh, Mansion Over the Hilltop and, and things like that, that that a lot of people don't remember. But uh, it was it was an early start for me, right, right out of the shoot. Was Dwayne Dwayne, is he your cousin? What's that? Dwayne? No, he's my brother. He's your brother? And he, does he uh, still sing with you? Well, we we do get together quite a bit, but he he's quite busy. He's on a pastoral staff oh. in Lancaster, California, uh, with a, a great church there, great great chapel. And uh, he's been there quite a while. They, they drafted him as the, the music pastor uh, quite a few years ago now when when their music pastor had to move on. Yeah. And my, my brother Dwayne was already in the area oh, yeah. uh, at, at a church in Antelope Valley, the same, same area. Mm -hmm. And that church had, uh, had kind of uh, started uh, kind of decaying because their pastor had gotten very ill with a, oh. a, a brain aneurysm and, oh. and uh, my brother and his wife had been helping to, to keep things going for a while but then then uh, Grace Chapel yeah. knew my brother and his wife because they were they were homeschoolers and the Grace Chapel was the kind of the hub for the the homeschoolers there in the area, so they already knew that Dwayne would be the be the nominated one if they needed a worship pastor. Wow! Hey, listen. He, he, oh. He's actually in the pastoral staff now, uh, head of all the benevolent 
ministries and the senior ministries. I'm glad he's doing that. I'm very proud of you. Yes, yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm very proud of him. I, I, tell my, I told my mom before she passed away that I wanted to grow up to be like my little brother. <laughs> uh, <laughs> your little brother? Oh my goodness. Yeah, well, he's a, he's a large little brother. He's, <laughs> he's twice my size and uh, height, and but, but he came along 10 years after I did. Oh, oh, okay. He's younger than me. I'm 68. Yeah. I said my age. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Front <laughs> row. So do you but write... <laughs> do you write compose and sing your own music or other people collaborate with you? It's, it's mostly uh, just stuff that I have I have uh, written down or or made notes of in my conversations with the Lord. It's all conversation, personal conversations with the Lord that I've had over the years and and those songs are are uh, those lyrics of those those intimate conversations and and then uh, the Holy Spirit puts puts music with it that says says what the, it says exactly the same thing as the lyrics do and the music actually is a very strong and uh, powerful language that that God God created so that we could have communication heart to heart. That's what music is for. You betcha. I hear you. I'm a lyricist myself and I got some Christian songs out. Right? Yeah. Uh, Pro-life myself. Do you have uh, a lot of CDs or albums, whatever? Oh yeah. Yeah, there's um, quite a few. Oh boy. Mm. And uh, then it then it graduated to CDs. 
Now digital. Digital yeah. on computer. Digital, well, CDs, it's, it's the same recording yeah. process, but then they they would make make that, they would cut that on a, on a CD rather than on a big vinyl. All right. Uh, and it's, it's basically the same process. Vinyl's coming back, kiddo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> big time, big time. Big. Ah, now you have uh, a... a big, big friend of mine, he released a, a couple Are they selling okay or? Oh yeah. Mm. I mean, uh, the the young young people who were, you know, all they knew was MP3s and and uh, digital music, yeah. and yeah. Uh, once they heard the vinyl record, they they were <laughs> they were shocked oh, that that goodness. was actually what the instrument sounded like. <laughs> wow! Not artificial or <laughs> well, anything. It, So your latest release that we've come to worship, is this in Spanish or is it in English or what? Uh, we've come to worship is in English. Right. Uh, With you and Nancy. The latest, the latest uh, release was uh, To Your Soy. To Your Soy. Which, which is Spanish for I am yours. Oh. And it is all Spanish, completely in Spanish. And including all the all the, uh, the 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 package itself, and there's a, it open it opens the CD uh, package or or sleeve opens, and it has my testimony in there. In Espanol, it, yeah, see. It was a that was a big project uh, for me, and and I had uh, the help of the Gutierrez brothers in the studio who've been good friends for many years and and they uh, they helped me not just sing Spanish like a gringo. Gringo, eh? I, I'm part Spanish myself, kiddo. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, verse. From Spain. You speak Spanish then? A uh, poquito espanol. <laughs> That's about the size yeah. of it. <laughs> you would probably really enjoy the Tuyo Soy album. It, yeah. It's, uh, it's a beautiful project. Jeff Lambs produced that. He, he's a very famous musician that mm -hmm. works works with uh, Franklin Graham. Oh, yeah. Events and and he has been part of the the, the Billy Graham uh, events and stuff for many years, along with other friends of mine, Bob Soma, Bill Badstone, and uh, Tony Coons, and and the. Uh, the beautiful the Tommy Coons band that oh. that is, has been kind of a stage band for for Billy and then then Franklin for the for the uh, Samaritan's Purse global global event that mm. he's done as well as a lot of the the stuff that the Franklin's done a lot of stuff in the, in America to try to get get the the people to wake up and and let's take a stand for the gospel. Yes. And with that, I have to say uh, we are almost finished our interview. I'd like to interview you again some other time if you wish. Sure. Okay, we're going to put on uh, one of your videos that you had sent to us. Uh, okay. Uh, I like talking to you. Well, it's been a real pleasure, Patty, to get to know you better. I hope we can keep, keep in touch. Yeah, and I'll get you for another interview. How about them apples? Okay. Okay, sure. Well, God bless you, sir. God bless. You and you. Okay. Catch you later. Okay, bye-bye.
Okie doke. Okie doke. Thank you, Terry Clark, for coming on to my show. We are proud to have you as one of our guests, and we hope to see you next week, so God bless. God, you're so good to me. You've always been so good to me. I'll sing it to God, you're so good. Come on, choir. God, you're so good to me. You've always been so good.